this guy. So I call this guy Blue Spruce. He's really benefited from the nitrate dosing. Oh, and check that out. Tyree Toadstool, just looking awesome. I, I mean, I, I hope the color changes a bit more because brownie green's not really something to write home about. And kind of indicated that I was screwed. And they were right. Hello, my friends. In today's video, we're gonna go over the June 2021 update of the 140 gallon Acropora Dominant Reef Tank. This video is gonna be structured a little different than my previous videos. I'm gonna be sharing with you my parameters in the next segment, followed by the following topics. The first one being fluconazole and my macroalgae. I'll give you an update on that and how things are going. The second is that my tangs have been fighting specifically the two yellow ones and one of them is now residing in a corner so I'm going to share that with you guys and finally we have the dreaded Aptasia it's in the system I've seen it for a while now and I've kind of kept it under control but in the last couple months I would say that it's kind of exploded and before I forget if you're new to this channel this is a channel all about reefing I've got mainly Acropora however I also do have LPS and zoanthids and a lot of videos. If you look at my profile, there's a lot of videos that are just videos of coral. So if that's something that interests you, please hit that subscribe button as it really helps me out and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. The first thing we're going to talk about are the tank parameters. Now I'm sharing these parameters with you just as a guide, um, just for information for you. Please do not look at these parameters and change whatever your tank parameters are. If you have any questions regarding any of these parameters, especially alkalinity, please leave it in the comments. I will respond or there are quite a few really knowledgeable people that follow this channel and I'm sure they will respond if they see your question. Here's the remains of my macroalgae. For those of you who are new to this channel and haven't had a chance to check out my macroalgae video that I posted a few weeks ago, this was entirely my fault, but if you're new to this channel, this section of my sump used to be completely filled to the brim with grape clerpa and ketomorpha. And the reason it's my fault is because I dose fluconazole without first removing the macroalgae. Now I've used fluconazole before, but only when I had ketomorpha. And with keto, I didn't notice an effect on it. This section was predominantly grape clerpa. Grape clerpa is definitely affected by fluconazole. And this is the result. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to a semi-successful reefer, Coral Carney, and Rare Things, Zoa, Reef, Zoanthids. These three actually commented on my macroalgae video and kind of indicated that I was screwed. And they were right. Um, I've left this, I've left what remains in here because I'm hoping that with the water changes, there's going to be enough dilution that if these guys are not damaged beyond the point of recovery, that they can come back. As you can see here, this is the yellow tang that is now hanging out in the corner. There's the other Tang, he's staying close to him. 
it, it was way worse a few weeks ago. And this all started after I'd removed all that egg crate from this tank. And we were away for a weekend. When I came back, I realized that, uh, and sometimes my power bar does this, it didn't turn off the LEDs, the LED bars at, I think they are supposed to turn off at 10 o'clock. So they could have potentially been on for two full days, in which case, even though this tang was doing okay with a bit of aggression, I mean, to be attacked for 48 hours straight or more, that, that's pretty tough. So when I came back, this guy was already in the corner. I tried to catch him, but he has plenty of energy left. So that's where I'm at right now. I don't know what to do in terms of... If you look at this tank, there's no way that I can go in there with a the net. If he's swimming as strong as he is right now, there's just no way I can go in to catch him. I do have a fish trap, but it's not, it's not good. I have tried mirrors. I only have a big size mirror, so I did put a mirror up here. But what happened was every fish in this tank would come to this corner and try to fight the reflection. And what I've read is it's actually not good to have prolonged use of a mirror because it's actually stress for the fish. So I had it up for, I think, maybe four days. This guy had recovered uh, and then I took the mirror away because like I said, like every fish was trying to fight. And what I have noticed, which is really interesting, is it seems like the other tangs are trying to keep the peace here. So I've noticed this guy, the yellow eye coal tang, come and try to defend the guy in the corner. At least that's what it looks like. And I've also seen the sailfin tang do the same thing. So really interesting behavior. If you guys have any thoughts or any ideas, please let me know. I believe at this point, I'm not gonna be able to net it and my trap is just not good enough. So if you have any, if you guys can come up with any other solutions, I would love to hear them. As always, now we have the top-down view of the tank and of the coral. So here's a pink Cadillac. It's a really robust grower, um, especially once it, it's hit its stride. And one of the easiest ways to tell if your coral are growing is just by looking at how close they're getting to each other. I find that's the easiest way instead of just looking directly at a coral and you kind of think it's grown, but you're not too sure. Here's the pearlberry. And then we got the red Diablo right below it. The red Diablo's colors are a bit faded. I'm not sure what's going on, if it's stressed out or something. Got the usual suspects here. So the teal guy is the or a Hawkins, then the red one's a, I believe a Rosaria, but here in Canada it's Wheelman Corals. And here's, this is a blue tip Turak, is it Turaki or Turakai? Australian coral, I believe. And once this one hit its stride, it's really taken off as well. This is the pink millie. It's, it's, um, it's doing okay, but I'm not really getting that polyp extension. CC purple haze. I think in the States, you guys have something similar called Robin Hood. Here's the Miyagi tort. It's just getting a bit too much light. Um, if it was lower par, I think 
some greens would actually start popping out. And we've got the Sunset Millie to the left, to the right here. It's, it's got some yellow highlights. It, it's hard to tell under like a whiter light. And then of course the classic Bali Green Slimer. Here's another piece of Pearlberry. And that's pretty much the first bombing. Oh, down there I've got a Montipora Confucia. So on the second bombing, we are, we're going to start off with the Green Dragon, CM Green Dragon. So CM is Coral Master up here in Canada. Uh, down there, that red piece, that's the GF Fox Flame. So it's really done really well, especially with the addition of nitrates. Um, the coloration definitely came back. And another one where the coloration came back is right in the middle there. So that's like a fully covered two inch frag tile or disc. That is Red Planet. Or is it Oari Red Planet? Anyways, it's kind of pink now, but I'm seeing a lot of growth. I'm seeing some new growth tips. So hopefully I'm finally gonna see that nice red coloration with some, some of the green accents. And here is, of course, I talk about this guy every time, Lavender Unicorn Bunnies. Funny thing, once, after dosing nitrates, the tips actually became uh, less purple in the sense that before the nitrates, so I, I guess when my tank was kind of nitrate deficient, um, a lot more of the tips were purple, and now it's a lot more green. So I don't, I don't know. I, I guess with the nitrate dosing, it, it just, it doesn't look as nice as I previously thought it did. But that being said, like, it's got a wonderful growth pattern and it is growing. It's growing nonstop. It's shading out that Jimmy Bean down below. In America, this is very similar to TSA Bill Murray. And then we got the DV Ember Eyes. Here is the Godzilla. Now the Godzilla's coloration, really nice. With, with the nitrate dosing now, yeah, this is probably the nicest I've seen this Reef Raft Canada Godzilla. Over here, uh, in the center towards the right, we have the wild, I believe this was a wild granulosa. Now, before the nitrate dosing, it was really dark. It was just like a dark brown. And now after nitrate dosing, there's a lot of new growth and it's become a light brownie green color. I, I mean, I, I hope the color changes a bit more because brownie green is not really something to write home about. Um, strawberry shortcake, it's, it's still in the process of coming back, but right now, like from this video, it looks like it's, it's almost all back. And then this, this guy. So I call this guy Blue Spruce. He's really benefited from the nitrate dosing. Growing like crazy, but not just growing like crazy, the polyp color actually became brighter after dosing nitrates. And it's brighter, um, I would say now it's more like a lime color, the polyps are. And I consider lime to be between green and yellow. So yeah, this, this is a piece that just keeps on just getting better and better. And then here's some of the smaller uh, frags that I'm growing out. Nothing to really write home about. And this, this is pretty much the second bomb. So let's go on to the last one. Oh, and check that out. Tyree Toadstool, just looking awesome. So this is the rack that's right in front of the third bomby. And over here, we're gonna start off with the classic Pac-Man. You're also gonna find it as a needle in a haystack. So really common, it's a really common deep water and it seems to be actually really hardy because I got it in a shipment with Red Dragon and Purple Dragon. And the Red Dragon and Purple Dragon I mean, they died in the first day. I thought this guy was a goner. 
but not only did he survive, like he's he's really thriving. That's a teal stylophora. Here's a teal deep water. It it's really common where I live. Um, it it doesn't have a brand name or anything. It's just it's just a nice teal dragon type coral. This is of course the famous WWC yellow tips. And right beside it, we got the Oregon Blue Tort. Again, another real classic piece. Um, I can't show you guys the Rainbow Loom, I'm sorry. It's just it's just too close to the surface. But this is a Cali Tort. And then to the left, we have a Lokanai. I think it's just like a yellow Lokanai. When I dosed, dosing nitrates, so higher nitrates, the entire body is um, turning more yellow. This is Fireflies. It kind of RTN'd a while back, and that's why it looks a bit smaller than in my previous videos. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, okay, so I'm just going to back up here, and we're going to take a look at Rainbow Loom. I'm sorry there's a water. But yeah, this guy is ginormous. And beside it is that giant bird's nest right here. Uh, it just keeps on growing. Uh, I know in my beginner introduction to SPS, somebody, like in my opinion, bird's nests are a beginner coral, but I mean, somebody had a different opinion on that. However, in this case with this teal one, I have s sold many frags to um, many beginner hobbyists and I would say a majority of them seem to be doing okay. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Um, I'm sure you've noticed it's been very different. I, I've put in a bit more effort into this. Now, it's not easy uh, due to time constraints. And I mean, just adding a bunch of little things takes up a lot of time. However, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, I would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to thank you in advance. Thank you for watching this video. If you've made it this far, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. As always, stay safe, happy reefing, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Take care, my friends.